Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 81. This week I'm going to be talking about some tricks that I use to make sure that the focus is the way I want it when I'm uh, doing liquid drop photography. So this will obviously apply to other types of uh, macro-ish type photography where you have a really narrow depth of field. But uh, today it'll be talking about it in terms of liquid droplets since I've gotten a number of questions about that. And it is a little tricky since the, the droplet, the splash that you're, photo you're uh, photographing is not there permanently. So you have to uh, make sure you, you do something to sort of figure out where that droplet is and, and sort of make it stay in the scene so that you can focus on it. So I'll be talking about that. But before I get into that aspect of this video, I wanted to talk about focusing charts. So if you just go to Google and... Uh, search for focus charts under Google Images, you'll get a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, I'll put a link into this one that I'm using uh, in the show notes, but uh, basically I like this one because it has uh, these numbers on here and uh, they're basically in centimeters. Uh, you could get one for inches as well. And it's not actually one centimeter, it's like 1.4 something centimeters, which is basically one centimeter of depth if you have this sheet at a 45 degree angle to the image you're photographing. So when it says one on here, it actually is one centimeter of depth even though the uh, the sheet of paper is at a 45 degree angle, which is, you know, a kind of clever way of doing things and really lets you sort of plan out uh, how much depth of field you want and make sure that uh, the focus is uh, sort of set up on the center of the droplet. So here's the setup I'm using for droplet photography today. And uh, I'll just show you the menu settings. I've gone through the menu settings and how to set them before I actually used the auto calibrate today uh, and then adjusted things a little bit. But I just want to go through the different menu settings so people can see what they are. Uh, go check out another video if you want to sort of see how they're set up. But uh, today we're going to be talking about focusing. And uh, what I've typically done most of the time in the past is I've got this uh, socket extender. And I'll put that into Reservoir. Like that, and then I'll um, activate it to make sure that it's hitting. So it's hitting the very center of uh, the ratchet. So that means that the droplet is going to land right there. So now we can focus on um, that ratchet. And you could use the autofocus on your camera, but that's not as exact as using a live view if you have that feature. So I typically use live view. And uh, with live view, what I'll do is I'll uh, zoom in until I'm fully zoomed in. Then you can adjust the focus until it's right where you want. And now it's uh, focused. I'll zoom back out. So... It should be pretty good, and I, I've used that in the past, and that works pretty well. But uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of this focus sheet. So as I mentioned before, I, I typically set it, you're supposed to set it at a 45 degree angle, like so. And what this will allow me to do is say, oh, I know the drop is going to be about a centimeter forward and a centimeter back. So now if I focus on sort of this center line, I can make sure that uh, the camera, here, let me just take a photo. So what we see here is that the, uh, the depth of field is really narrow here, even though my aperture is 16. So that uh, if you had like a 2.8 uh, aperture, I would expect something narrow like this, but with a 16 aperture, I would expect something wider. And it actually is wider. The problem is that 
uh, live view always sets the aperture to 2.6. So you can actually use the aperture adjust button on your camera. It's right down here. Where is it? It's kind of hard for me because the camera is tilted. But, but it's, basically I can tilt that and it makes things dimmer when I hit the, uh, I call it the aperture adjust button. Um, might have a different name, but basically you can see the whole thing gets in focus when I push that down and dimmer because it stops down the aperture. But when I release it, then the depth of field is back to an aperture of 2.8. So that's the sort of tricky part about uh, using live view. And um, if we look at the last picture that I just triggered, you'll see that um, it's kind of overexposed, but it is all... Uh, depth of field is good so um or, or it's wide i guess in that case so i've taken a few photos just to sort of show you what's actually happening now um so this first one's uh an aperture of 2.8 and then you can sort of see that the depth of field increases when you go to an aperture of 4 and here we've got one with an aperture of 5.6. Here's an aperture of 8. And I'm basically talking about these in, in these apertures because these are full stops of light. But you can see that the depth of field keeps growing. I typically will use anywhere from uh, an aperture of 11 to an aperture of 16 or so. Uh, when when doing these uh, types of shots to get enough depth of field So that's pretty much all I have today for focusing techniques uh, Hopefully that's been helpful and if you've got different techniques that you use definitely post them in the comments mm, Thanks for watching